Okay, today is the 7th of June, it's the afternoon. It's Tuesday afternoon, and Mark and I are continuing our study through the book of Philippians. We are ready to start in today in uh, chapter, um, chapter 3. We're going to be working through 1, verse 1 through 5. And then, Mark, what I'd like for you to do after you read those five verses, stay, leave your Bible open in case I want you to read one of the scriptures again, okay? Yeah. So read, read that one through five, and then leave chapter three open, mm-hmm. open in case I want you to refer to it again, okay? Chapter, chapter three, one through five. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write this thing. Thanks to you, to me indeed is grievous, but to you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. We are the circumcision, the force of God, and the Spirit rejoice in Christ Jesus to have no confidence in the flesh. For I might also have confidence in the flesh of any other man. Thank us that he hath, wherewith he might trust in the flesh I more. Circumcised. The eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of the Hebrews, is touching the law of Pharisee. All right. Well, this particular chapter it has to do with, again, the Apostle Paul coming against the doctrine of works. And... He starts in verse 3 and he says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the uh, the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, it's not grievous, but for you it is safe. Um, There's a lot of people out there right now that are saying, different things you know there are people that are teaching that man is saved by making a decision for Christ upholding the doctrine of free will there are people out there that are in the Hebrew roots movement that are teaching you know you have to you have to honor the Jewish ceremonial laws and the Jewish ceremonial days, the holy day and all of these different days. This is what Paul is coming against. We see in the uh, 13th chapter of uh, 2 Corinthians, we read, uh, I'm reading in the 11th verse says wait a minute I'm in the wrong I need to go to chapter 13 2 Corinthians 13 Verse 11, finally, my brethren, certain well be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind. Mark, you stay in Philippians, the third chapter, okay? Be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Well, I, I believe that when he says be of one mind, in other words, if we believe in the sovereignty of God, in salvation, if we believe in two if we believe in total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, final perseverance of the saints, we should not be touting other doctrines. We should not be um, teaching a, a conditional salvation. If we say that God is sovereign over all things and there are no maverick molecules, we should not be touting something else. Mark, read verse 2. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of 
beware of, he calls these people dogs. He also calls them, he also calls them the, the um, concision. Well, we can look in the fifth chapter of Galatians. Now, you don't need to go there, Mark. You stay there where you're at, okay? In the fifth chapter of Galatians, and 15th verse says, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. If you let the Spirit, you're not under the law. These people are trying to bring the New Testament saints back under the law. And that pretty much is all that the first and second chapter of Galatians deals with. Is Paul coming against these Judaizers who are saying that you have to be circumcised. And he says, False brethren, I'm reading in Galatians 2 4. False brethren, unawares, brought in and came into privately to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. What are you saying? And he even said that he, in verse 11, that he had to withstand Peter to the face over this matter. They were, fear, they were fearful of those which were of the circumcision. And he goes on in verse 16 and says that, knowing a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Christ, Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 2.16 I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Verse 21, Galatians 2. So this is what he's coming against, even at the Church of Philippi here. He's covering the same ground. And Mark, read uh, verse uh, 3 for me. For we are the circumcision of the Jewish God and the Spirit, and the Jewish Christ. No. No. Verse 3 of chapter 3. Read that. Read it again. For we are the circumcision which which God and the Spirit rejoice in Christ Jesus and have the promise of life. Okay. Thank you. We have no confidence in the flesh. That's what he says. We're not trusting in our circumcision. We're not trusting in our baptism. We're not trusting in our good works. We're not trusting in our tithes and offerings. We're not trusting in our cemetery degree. We're not trusting in anything other than the completed work of Christ Jesus. In Romans 2.29, he says, for he is 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. He said circumcision doesn't profit anything, what he says. So, Mark, read verse um, 4. For I might also have confidence in the flesh of any other man, make it that he hath for us and might trust in the flesh I will. If anybody had the right to boast about all of his education and all of his zeal for works, it was Paul. He was brought up under Gamaliel. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. But what does he say? 
He says he counts all of this loss for Christ. You know? In fact, in the 8th verse he says, I count all things for loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I do count them but done that I may win Christ. He counts all of his education, all of his upbringing as done. That's pretty, that's pretty straightforward, is it not? And so, this is exactly what he's um, talking about here, is that he has, he has put away all of this stuff, all this false doctrine that he was brought up in, and he's now preaching sovereign grace. He's preaching unconditional election. He's pre- preaching um, by grace do you say through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. In Second Corinthians eleven eighteen through twenty one, I'm going to read that. It says, "Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves so wise." For you suffer if any, if a man bring you into bondage, a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Well, he says that he talks about all the persecution he had taken at the hands of the Jews. And he says, If I needs glory, verse 30, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. There's a lot of people taking an awful lot of glory in there. You know, I've been a minister for 59 years. Well, I got my master to bend degree from Oxford or Cambridge or... or wherever, Liberty University. You know what? Before Jerry Falwell died, he preached a message saying that limited atonement was false doctrine. Mark, read verse uh, 5 for us. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of the Hebrews, the Christian law of their He was circumcised the eighth day. We know in Genesis, the um, 17th chapter, uh, we see the account of um, that they were they were told to be circumcised in the Old Testament as part of the old law service. He says in verse 10, "This is my covenant, which she shall keep." Between me and you and my seed after thee, every man among you shall be circumcised. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations, and so on. But this was under the old covenant. I was reading there in Genesis 17, um, verses 16 through, uh, I'm sorry, verses uh, 10 through 12. This was under the old covenant. We're now under a new and better covenant. A circumcision in the circumcision not made with hands. We don't have to be circumcised anymore because we're not under the old law service, even though the Judaizers would try to bring us under the old law service. Okay. But that's what this is talking about in Philippians 1 through 5. Uh, we will continue next time in verse 6 of chapter 3 of Philippians.
Uh, Mark, I appreciate you being with me today and looking these scriptures up. And uh, um, may everyone that listens to this have a blessed day.